So, you've managed to start your first print. Nice work. Did you know that resin printing is a three-stage process? First, we print our part using photopolymer resin. Then, we wash our 3D resin print in an agitated solvent bath to remove uncured resin. After drawing, the part is then cured using UV light and sometimes a bit of heat. In this video, we'll showcase each step. So let's start by taking a look at the print process using the new Form 4 as our demo unit, an inverted MSLA resin printer that just came out this year. Once you've sent your sliced 3D printed part to the printer, the printer will begin its pre-print routines. <laughs> Man, listen to that. Hey, Star Wars, I think I found R2-D2's brother. Anyways, these routines involve heating the resin, mixing the resin, and filling the resin tank. Upon completion, the build platform lowers into the resin tank and the first layers begin printing. The printer's UI shows the completion status of each layer as well as time remaining. To ensure ample bed adhesion, the first several dozen layers or so experience longer exposure times. Afterwards, print speed ramps up considerably. For instance, on the Form 4 that you see here, each layer cures in only a few seconds thanks to its high-powered light source and LCD system. The speed of the Form 4 is also attributed to the mechanically driven mixer and Z-axis force sensor, which detects a successful peel, thus minimizing delay between layers. Upon print completion, the build platform raises and the camera, if you have a Form 4 and you decide to activate it, will take a snapshot of the print for Formlab's own analytics. The UI then asks how the print turned out and a print completion email is sent to the address registered to the account. We can now walk over to the printer and take a look at the print. It's worth mentioning here that you should always wear gloves and safety glasses when near uncured resin. There are no exceptions. Anyways, the print looks good to me. Let's go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Nice job, Form 4. At this point, it's time to begin the next stage of the process, washing away the uncured resin from our part. Before washing, it's a good idea to let the part and build platform drip for a while to reclaim as much uncured resin as possible. The Form 3L has a hanger printed from tough resin that helps expedite this process, but the Form 3 and Form 4 do not. We'll probably end up designing one and printing it off one of our printers, so keep an eye out on the channel for this video. Now, there are two ways to wash your resin prints. First way is to leave them on the build platform so that the wash removes uncured resin from both the part and the build platform. Using the wash to clean your build platform is very useful if you have any debris on the build platform or if you are planning on changing materials. The wash units from Formlabs have build platform rests for this very purpose. The other way is what we did in this video, removing the part from the build platform. Now, we did not have the finish kit when we received our Form 4, so I'm removing the part the ham-fisted way. I do mind you doing such an appalling bloody job of that, you ham-fisted oaf. Honestly, I could do a better job than that with the end of a bulldozer. Yes, thank you James May. I know it's not graceful. The build platform mount included in the Form 4's finish kit is very similar to that included in the Form 3L's finish kit. It mounts on the side of a table and has a dovetail mount at an angle that mates with the build platform. Oh, and that dovetail mount was printed on the Fuse One Plus, Formlab's SLS solution. Cool stuff. This setup makes removing parts so much easier. What do y'all think of that? Wow! Yeah! 
<laughs> Good. We're glad you approve. With the part removed, we can now place it in the wash basket of the wash L in this case. The reason we had to go with this approach is because the wash L does not have an adapter for the Form 4 build platform. This is because the Form 4 was released much later than the wash L. Form 3, on the other hand, was released before the wash L, so it has an adapter for its build platform. I'm sure Form Labs will make an adapter at some point, but with all of our 3D printers, we'll probably just end up designing one and printing it in the interim. Keep an eye out for this video. Set the wash cycle based on the resin. Five minutes for the general purpose V5 resins in this case, and then you just let the wash do the rest. When the cycle ends, the wash basket raises and the part can begin drying. Most users rely on isopropyl alcohol of at least 90% concentration to wash their resin prints. Before I let it fully dry though, I like to go in with a squirt bottle and hose down any channels, nooks, and other small details with this IPA to remove any stubborn, uncured resin. This also helps remove residue left over from other print jobs, such as the glass particles from a previous Rigid 10K print. Afterwards, let the part air dry in the wash basket or use an explosion-proof fan to accelerate drying. While the part dries, return the build platform to the printer and specify its condition on the printer's UI. After the part finishes drying, it is now safe to handle without gloves. We're now ready to start the final step in the resin printing process, the cure. We'll be using the Cure L by Formlabs for this process. At the time of recording, Formlabs had not yet released the built-in cure profiles for the V5 GP or general purpose resins on the Cure L, but the cure times and temperatures are present on the Formlabs support site. For the V5 GP resins, the cure time is only five minutes at room temperature. This is insanely fast. Because of the ultra high powered UV light source on the Form 4, most of the curing is actually happening during the printing process. No temperature ramp up or cool down means five minutes from start to finish. Now, I cured this part with the supports on. I usually recommend this because it improves dimensional stability during curing. This means that after curing, the supports need to be clipped away. Make sure you wear safety glasses when using the flush cutters to clip away supports, because those things can really fly. Make sure you take it easy with some of the smaller details during this process. When you clip the supports, the flush cutters will push up on the object as it's cutting, and this can cause some of the smaller details to break. With that process completed, let's take a look at how this print on the right compares to a gray V4 print from our Form 3L on the left. Now I'll be flipping the parts around a few times, so just to clear things up, the newer gray V5 material printed on the Form 4 is a bit darker and has more of a sheen than the gray V4 part. The details look pretty similar, but the Form 4 print only took one hour, while the Form 3L print took four and a half hours. Super crisp details at a higher speed and with a material boasting improved mechanical properties over its predecessor and offered at a lower price is just insane. Formlabs is setting the bar for other 3D printer companies and tech companies in general. Oh, and here is the same print job, but printed in PLA on an FDM machine. For intricacies, FDM just can't hold a candle to SLA. No way. Details get lost, stringing on finer features, and the finest features like the railings aren't even registered by the slicer. Any model railroaders out there, use resin for your trains. Save FDM for the terrain and the buildings. Well, that's the process in a nutshell. A few more steps compared to FDM, but all in all, it's really simple stuff. That's all from me. We'll see you on the next one.